Because as the wickedness increases, that's how now love will grow cold. And then, and then a person will befriend a servant at your home he will befriend your wife and yet he's on a mission of now bewitching your, your of bewitching your children don't you hear such stories that people now are having different kinds of conflicts that the maid has now killed the child in a certain house all those things all this wickedness these are the reason to why love is now becoming cold and people will say this person should not reach here and even the child whom you raised should not even come here when you think God for what he has done in the past it helps you to wait for the next so you youth the young ladies and gentlemen you women and men where is the waiting place of a righteous what the Lord has said I'm saying I'm still on the same thing that God is doing. So all the battles, all the fights, jealousy, lust. All those things they come in the church because of the people who come to serve them. What they are not sanctified. There's no any other reason. Of knowing who's coming, the ushering team. Look at the people coming in the church. Look at the people coming. Who is the person who needs me? Is it someone coming on a bicycle or a, or a motorcycle? Where has he parked his car? And those are things which people ask. To Every people are only going to serve in the church. So in this time, even an interpreter, so even an interpreter sometimes says that so in this period of profession they become apostles so this ministry should be ministered by the people from the levies. David once said, The deeds that the Lord has done are various. He said, If I would wish to talk about it, it would be more than how my words could express it. And he said, and he said, even though I would want to write it, I wouldn't find the ink and also the papers to write it on. And he also said, if I could even measure it or weigh it, I wouldn't find a measuring meter for me to find it. And he also said that your purpose for me is also great. Praise be to God. All of us, we only speak about a certain portion, a small and small portion. But then we will glorify or praise God once we receive another language. Today for us, we can't find the exact words. Ugushi muko wikwiriye Nyumu za muru ndiru rimi Njengu singi ziteka Amen! Jiri mngisi bila nanira As I'm still in the world, it fails me Aliko alikia chiza ajira umuru rimi rukwiriye There is a time that God will give me the right words Manishimi Praise be to God May God be praised for us to give us this holy congregation today. So coming for fellowship, it's the grace of God. 
Because the word of God says that no one can ever come in his presence unless it's him who calls him. So it means like making a symbol is also different from making a sign. Yeah. Calling and making symbols, it's different. Because when you call, you use ishbi. But for a symbol, you only make a sign. Even though I can just make a sign. Meaning that even though it can just make a blink of an eye. So when you live with God, you know what he says and without him talking more. So we thank God for he has brought us in his presence. May he be praised for it. Today, I will talk about how his God who creates his own praises. Himself he creates praises. That is the theme for today. And those who are going to write, that's the theme. And those who are also going to publish it, that's the theme. He's God who creates thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thanksgiving of the saints is equivalent to harvest. It's equivalent, equivalent to harvest. There's a time of sowing. There's a time of nurturing. And there's also a time of harvesting or with reaping. Are we together? So God He's the one who also sows it. So in which garden? You are the garden. And nurturing it, you work together with her, with him, with God. Harvesting those thanksgiving, all the praises, it is not about saying, this is my share. The praises will belong to him. And you will only remain with the testimony. You remain with the testimony. There are people whom I heard so living long it makes you have an experience or know more things there's a time that I told you that it had been 44 years while I was in the ministry so I, I accounted a lot of things I saw people who wants to take on the honor of God due to what God has done and for them, they were only allowed for the testimony, to have the testimony. And the praises would belong to God. So when I talk about the praises of Thanksgiving, remember that Thanksgiving is also divided into two. So there are people who sometimes confuse the wording. There's sometimes people confuse the scriptures. So listen to me attentively. Speaking, extending your hands to God and lifting up your hands to God. There is difference. Lifting up your hands high to God and extending your hands to him. So ex lifting up the hands, it's what we're doing. Looking, looking at me. So extending, it's just doing like that. So lifting up your hands and extending your hand. So when we come before God, so we lift up our hands to him and we lift them to the holy place of the church and we thank him. But again, we also extend our hands and we also give. So some people, they only spend their time in lifting up their hands alone. But when they are going to extend them, they only pull them back to themselves. So listen to me attentively. A pastor or a shepherd 
He's allowed to receive all the things to which people are expected to give because these, they come to the church. Those things come to the church. But when we lift our hands high, we are only lifting them to heaven. When we lift our hands high, we are directing our praises to heaven. And when we extend our hands, we're giving our praises to church, to the church. Those also belong to God. But does God have the basic needs of eating, drinking, being thirsty, putting the towels, or paying the rent? So if, if the keyboard is destroyed, God will know of it, but... That is why in the past time he has created things which are supposed to happen in his house. So, so he creates his own thanksgiving or praises. So let me tell you my sister brethren so among the things which are hard for or difficult for us it is to become the garden in which God can plant his things. So he spent 10 years sowing in the household of our brother here. So all the time he was running to bushes and also praying, he was God nurturing. So when the right time, right time came, they find the child and they saw thanksgiving. And the ministry of all people who have performed anything to them, it is only to testify. The honor and praises, they belong to God. And here we only give offerings of a willing heart. So what's the reason to why we give offerings? So the offering that we give here is not equivalent to the child that I've received. Amen. Amen. I prayed for a woman in Nyagatare. It had been 12 years. And the Lord has revealed me to her. And God gave me two daughters, or twins. And she gave an ox. She bought an ox here at the gates of the church, but only people could only look at it and, thanks, and thank God. And the thanksgiving belonged to God, but the ox belonged to the church. Because God will not take that ox to heaven. But when it reaches here, so automatically it belongs to heaven as well. So things are being now explained by immature people. So not knowing it is one. But again, yet you know it is another thing. Because there were no longer low people from the Leviticus yeah, people. Yeah. Because those people no longer exist. There's no reason for offering and giving tithe. There's no reason. So all people speak of this. I saw that they never read the book of Hebrews. Because the book of Hebrews. Starting from chapter 4. Because in chapter 4, that's where you see the blood of the goat. That's where you get to see the ashes of a calf. That's where you get to see the oxes and everything else. And that's where now they reach on Christ in chapter 5. 6 and 7. 
And reaching to the ninth chapter. So in those scriptures, he speaks that even though there's no longer the ministry of the people from the Leviticus tribe, but the ministry of Christ is still continuing. And the one of Christ has replaced the ancient one. But what was done in the ancient time should not stop. Because shepherdhood continues. He only stopped the ancient time. But shepherdhood continues. So what do you talk about and I understand? So understand this, especially the leaders. Tell me how I will spend the day with the pastor. In China and Dubai. And as we are also generating income. And there's a time they're also going to level up the price. And after leveling up the price, they will take what I was supposed to purchase. So by the time now we're going to Majerba to get what, to withdraw what we have bought. And we both go to the church while we are burdened and weary. What is he going to give to me? What is he going to offer to me? So this is the thing that they told me. And the reason to understand it is that it's biblical. So going to Numbers chapter 3 from verse 11. That verse says, Myself, the Lord, I bought my people from the Israelites. This is the people from the Leviticus. So I appointed my people from the Israelites. So among the 12 tribes, I only chose one. Which is the one from Levi. So I chose it for it to serve me in the tent. And the rest, 11 tribes. Go and do any other kind of activity remaining. You go and plant crops. And then bring the things in my church to now feed the people from And Levy people are only going to serve in the church. So in this time, even I'm in chapter 11, so even I'm in chapter 11, I can purchase cement. So even I'm in so in this spirit kind of profession, they become apostles. So this ministry should be ministered by the people from the levies. Not, set, not setting traps with different buyers and sellers. Sit here and serve him. They will bring him to you. Sit here and serve him. They will bring it to you. And tomorrow you're going to open the Bible and read cement. When you open the Bible, you start reading about charcoal. We are sitting here and waiting for me to welcome you. And I'm waiting that they give me the word to speak. Receive a message of containers reaching at the port. But just do one thing. Do one thing. And if they deny it, let them sit.
So bear with me, I speak as an old person. I am no longer an immature person. To speak I'm saying I'm still on the same thing that God is doing. So all the battles, all the fights, all those things they come in the church because of the people who come to serve them, but they are not sanctified. There's no any other reason. There's no any other reason for this. Because every person who sells and they now find certain traps for you to have a bigger price and now they buy the, the thing that you wanted to purchase. There's nothing bad remaining for them to do. But for a person who's in the tribe of Levi who are here, there is no time that I've ever come here and not find this man of God here. He's in the office, he's always in the office, receiving the people of God. My friend, Chef Pastor, and he's also my son-in-law. Do not look at people due to their positions. Because that has already started happening. Of knowing who's coming, the yeah. ushering team. Look at the people coming in the church. Look at the people coming. Who is the person who needs me? Is it someone coming on a bicycle or a, or a motorcycle? Where has he parked his car? And those are things which people ask to know the kind of person whom they are going to receive. So here in the, in the Bible, in Ezekiel 34, they call it as now taking, favoring the bigger ship to the least ones. But even for us who have cows or cattle, that's not how we look at them or describe them. So you like them as they are. You care for them. They're also the lazy ones among them. They do not milk the same amount of milk. There's one which gives back to the But do not blame them for that. So in that garden in which God has sold praises, there comes a time where he nurtures them. And at the time of harvesting, that's why you will hear a person standing here and asking for a time to talk about it. Let us read in the Psalm 22, verse 26. Psalm 22, verse 26. To others, it might be the 25th verse. Okay. I'm going to talk about some words of the scripture. Father, help me. Hallelujah! My father. It is on you. You alone. You alone is the source of my praises. My praise. Not, not from not. All other way. Oh no. Another. He never moves. He never comes. He my praise does not come from any other way or any other person. It only comes to you, from you. 
So what does this say? So this is what I was saying earlier, that it is God who is He is the source of my praises. The second, that's why I praise you in the great assembly. A great assembly. What are we going to describe it? To? How are we going to measure it? So that's also another means of the devil to show that sometimes an assembly is small. There's a certain pastor. They invited him in a certain place. Reaching there. So the way that you usher us coming from a different direction. And there is no one who could even glance in the church and see the number of people in the church. So now they ushered him in their own protocol. So at the time where he sat before even praying, he looked at the church. And then he asked the, the pastor, are you, have you invited me for these people? So these are the people whom you have called me for. So you should know a person at his level. So I no longer stand before these people. So imagine a person who speaks in such a way. So even though Christ is also the master and the master of and he has come, he has come when we didn't even have one second. And he went to the sea. And he started calling one by one by one by one. Christ, our boss. So Christ, our master. So he said himself. So where two? All three gather from in my name. I will be with them. No, ne. So, who are you, apostle? Who are you, who are you to deny the people of God that they are few? So, did you know that a church is like a stadium? It's a mistake to now blame a church that they are few. It's a mistake to now blame so quantifying or making people in plural. So all things which are put in plural or in uh, negatives. So unless something is greater than one, it's called plural. So when a person, there are many than one, then there are even many. So David, David said that that will be a great Alleluia. assembly and I will speak of my praises. So he went back to his home. Do not think that this is just a story. He went back home. Truly. So he has, put, he has packed his car right next to the door of the church. And he had packed right next to the door of the church. So even though they can pack mine in the other valley, I will just go and find it where it is. So, so don't you see that sometimes I come on a motorcycle? So this thing of not being humble is also going to bring trouble. The third thing I will fulfill my vow before those who fear you. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will fulfill my vow. I will fulfill my vow before those who honor you. So this is something I'm going to mention on this. So maybe I will come back for this. But let me declare this to you that offerings and tithes they do not bring it to bishop in a big hotel. They do not bring it to apostle in Grand Legacy Hotel. They bring it in the holy place. 
And it is given before those who fear the Lord. So let it amaze you Christians that it was defiled and it was also among the things that they should observe that they shouldn't even feed of this unless it's in the holy place. No, no, no. So now people, they only go out for them to <laughs> take of this. <laughs> There's a place where we're going to, we're going out to. <laughs> so if there's any visitor who wants me, tell them to find me to Casablanca. <laughs> so there's no prison they find in Casablanca. <laughs> there's no prison they find in a bar. <laughs> there's no prison they find in a hotel. <laughs> so they find a priest in the holy place. Holy place. A hera iman. Holy place of God. Holy place of God. So that is where they find the priest. Oh my God. Can I get a from you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly and before those who fear you I will fulfill my vows Psalm 30 verse 13 so that verse 13 to some, to some Bibles, it might be the 12th verse. Do you know how many Bibles are in English? Do you know how many Bibles are in English? Do you know how many Bibles are in English? Do you know how many Bibles are in English? Do you know how many Bibles are in English? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Kujira ngubwiza bwanje bukuririmbira ishimwe budaceceka. Uwiteka mana yange nzagushima iteka ryose. Ah! Praise be to God. Windu yibishi. Amarira yanjye gahinda uyagize indirimbo. You have turned my wailing into joy. And you have removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Oh my God. So my wailing or weeping you have turned it into a dancing thing. I couldn't push you now. When you just heard the crying. I so you have turned my wailing into dancing. Amen. Amen. That's why you will hear that we have songs which are not sung in the morning period. Because so the wailing in which I spent a long time in so it was praises which you have planted you nurtured them so now I turn them into praises and I go to dance in the church so turn them into a dancing thing I will go to dance truly so the Lord you have removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Sackcloth so was a garment which could describe a pain. So when a person was saddened, so the first thing they would do 
So the things which you now name as prayer requests, people would not even talk in that period. So what would tell you that someone is in a bitter life, or maybe they're going to pray, you get to see that they're holding their beards and they would remove it, tear it down. They would tear it down together with the flesh and hold another part of the beard and tear it down and throw it down. Take the beard down. They tie it, tear it down, throw it down. And you get to see that he's going in burning charcoal and bought a, a mat full of ashes. And he would put the ashes on himself. And in that instant, the suit which was wearing, or this short, not even unbuttoning the, the buttons, look at me, he would hold it from the upper part and he would tear it down and throw it down. And there would be a sackcloth nearby. And he wears it. Not even a new one, but old. And then, he goes to a certain place like that and he starts he starts now lying down on the ground. And all the people would look at him. They would know that now he's starting the prayers. So he's starting the prayers and he's truly saddened. So this thing that I'm telling you. So this was the solution of the Israelites coming from Babylon. And they had felt. And they had felt to now talk. And they had felt to now send out the women whom they had married in the foreign land. And they had felt it truly. And as they now gather to pray, and as God would talk to them, and he would say that they will never feel pleased as long as they're there. I will never delight in you as long as I see them in you. So Nehemiah teared them down and he teared down his beard and he put ashes on himself and he wears the sackcloth and he went in the mud or the So the affliction to him now as reaching in the place so the entire rain rained on him and rain was now with, together with the sweat and also where the beards had been and also rain it's also painful in wounds the Bible declares that listen to this thing hallelujah, hallelujah. and the evening at the time of offering their sacrifice hallelujah hallelujah so now the elders in the Israelites they came and found Nehemiah where he was lying down they told him honorable our lead so now wake up go and shower put some lotion on yourself because all the people here now have sent out all the women whom they had now married in the foreign land in Babylon so I'm, saying this, I'm saying this to explain to you what wearing the sackcloth means. You turn my welling into dancing. Remove the sackcloth and showered me with joy. That, that, that so that my heart may sing your praises and be silent. I would like to talk about that my Mura heart Mura. sing your praises and not be silent. Mura. Are you following Mura. me? Mura. So I want you to understand what I'm going to say. Now, 
ndashaka kuvuga i want to say iyo gushima tuvuga no gushima dutanga birangiye so at the end of praising as we speak and also dancing when it comes to our in the coming moment worshiping kuramya irasoza dushyire hamatangazo dutsinde rutanga is going to end we give out announcements and we go back home amaturo ngira ngo twayatanza ngira tanza aha ngo byarangiye so giving offerings as also so this word has said nubwo byose byacecetse even though everything else is silent ubwiza bwawe bukomeze rushime let my beauty glorify you isura ya ubwayo your face itself even when you are in silence ni gihe waba uri mu guceceka cyangwa se ucecetse isura ya your face ubwiza bwa your beauty go bugumye bushime let let it keep on praising and not be silent ndenda kuvuga mchanga ndenda kuvuga ichanga so what do i want to mean here kuchira bamvuye mu rusengero bushima so why do people even after giving thanks in the church no kuranya no guhimbaza and praising and worshiping na turuka hanga and only coming here ya umotaru ntwaye niba ntega moto so either if it's the motor guy whom i'm going to go with kubona mu maso ndashari nda hambije gahanga he sees that my face is not welcoming mugore wanje cyangwa umugabo wanje akabona ntashye nabi my wife or husband they get to see that i go back home with a bad mood nakubuse papa wabana wabaye ikintu kuri papa wabana and then she start asking you what has happened the father of my kids so what has happened to you you are coming back home in a so what are you going to say yet you are coming from the church and all children will tell their mother mother why is our father now coming back home and he's in a bad mood he didn't even want to greet us listen to this this word has said even though thanking him through praises let my heart keep on singing to you all thank amen. you amen hallelujah hallelujah that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent yeah. uh. when I'm in silence I'm, I'm also in singing truly i'm silent and only looking at my face my face is giving an impression of singing hallelujah the word of god it tells us not to become bitter people so husbands not be bitter to your wives and the same applies to wives Parents do not be bitter to your children. So this word of not being bitter is here in the holy scriptures. He says that I should also have a face which has an impression of showing the praises of God. Let us go in chapter 33, so. Umurongo wa mbere. Verse 1. Nga bakiranutsi mwe mwishimira uwiteka gushima gukwiriye abatungana nasoje kandi ndimana ka kumusoze mwabakiranutsi mwe you righteous eh mwishimira uwiteka rejoice in the lord yego gushima gukwiriye abatungana sing all you who are upright in heart amen yeah yeah Mm. So praises which is upright for those who are right in their hearts. Mm -hmm. Sing joyfully to the Lord you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Amen. Amen. So what do I want to mean here? So I want to say thanking God but again one which is fitting to the upright. So this verse it is coming to give you a discipline. 
and also rebuking you. Be like as if it's giving you a direction. Huh? You know very well that you didn't spend a, a night alone and yet you're not married. But then you come here as well. You come here in your skirt. You come here to praise God. In what Are you thinking the one whom you spend the night together with all the place where you spend the night? So the word I say that praises are fitting for the upright. So at night you are betraying. It has reached at midnight. While the one who's supposed to die, you have made a him, and you have also stolen from him. And you also come in a nice trousers and you come standing firm to say So praises are fitting for the upright. So people who now bewitches others. And then you want to save yourself and remove or kill the other. But what is amazing when you reach at Rusumo, you now take an alibus. You take an alibus truly. And when you come from Diporosu, you come on a bike. That you can even start, that the fellowship will start while you are here. And that the shepherd or pastor, you know, someone will not miss you. Oh. Praises are fitting for the upright. I was amazed. The word of God had said that you will do all we take to himself. The word had said that you will do all kinds of wickedness and then you will come running in my house. And it also says in the scriptures that who have told you that you will come to defile my house. And now in the next scriptures, the Lord says, I am fed up with the offerings which are not right. I am fed up with your songs. They are like screams or shouting. Silence your keyboard. Do not even sing to me. The fellowship which you had in the month and also the beginning of the year stopped them. But seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God, which is like a sea or a river. First, seek the kingdom of God, which is like a sea which is wide open. So after seeing that righteousness, then come back to me. You will find it in Malachi chapter 3. Verse 4 and you continue. He says that even though your offerings will be approved in the sight of God. And that is when it is going to delight in them. Because the ones that you had in the past time. And in the past years. What can you do? That your offerings. That the Lord might delight in your offerings. My friends. May you try and not throw. Try and do not be, do not live like people who just throws away things. You should give an offering which touches the heart of God. Oh my God. There is great wickedness in this country. There is great hatred. And, and I know the reason of this. The reason is written so in Matthew 24, Matthew 24, verse 12. Matthew 24, verse 12. Yeah. 
Maze kuko ubugome buzagwira urukundo rwabeshi ruzakonja. Full stop. Ni nuwo ngona kwa bwenye. Uziko kubera kumenyera ijambo ry'Imana. So did you know that people when they are accustomed to the word of God? Musige kubukunda kuri koresha ariko mwarikase. You now like to use it while you have now changed it or edited it. Ugasanga abantu bazu uyu murongo. And you will not find that people who are aware of this scripture. Barakoresha kare kanuko nyirose ngo urukundo barakonja. They will only use the other one that love is not cold. The love has become cold truly. But who does not know this? I will only know about myself and they will also take care of themselves. There is no person who doesn't know that love has become cold. But what was the purpose of it? So because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow old, cold. So because of the increase of wickedness, there so as the wickedness increases, it will now cause love to grow cold. So when now we're talking about wickedness, so for you who are still young, so let me help you to understand this clearly. So in the past time of our fathers, there was no rent. No. There were no lodges. Thank you. There were no lodges. Or hotels and motels where people spend the night. And you know what mm. happens according to the level of different levels of people. Maybe there were ones that equivalent to 3,000 or 1,500. But now we have lots. But our forefathers now took certain journeys. When there were no lodging places. So finding a place where to spend the night. You would find a place where to start. And you would now talk about yourself in a certain home where you're reaching. And a person will stand to a tree there. And they will now talk about themselves in a home where they find there. It would be like calling, hey, I'm calling to that house. And I'm talking, speaking at the outside of their home. I wasn't even allowed to go closer to the gate. That no one may come out. And one day, once they find someone at the gates of the cattle who's glancing in it, and then he will spend an he will send an arrow. Now thinking that I am someone who's going to steal them. So that is why a person should call out aloud when they're far from the gates. And they will now talk about themselves. And they will come out, out. And, will come out and say, "Yes, we are peaceful." No, they say. And then he would ask if you would find a visitor, would they, would they find a lodging place? And they would say, Fear not, yes, you could find a place here. So let us send a child who's going to open the gate for you. So now the child is going to open the gate for you. And the child would go to open the gate. And the guest would enter in the home. And he would be welcomed or received. And what would be the size of that house? What would be the size of it? It is not like the ones that people have now where they have four and the other substance. And now they just it wasn't like bigger houses that we have in this period where people are just moving around. Where their children are in different parts of the world. But having a person who's going to find a resting place in that home in this period. 
If you would be like a best friend or a close friend to you, you would take them to a different place in your life. So what happened to all of this? What's the reason of it all? So even the visitors themselves, they are full of wickedness. So the enemy comes from the room where they have given him hospitality. And he has found that my daughter in his room and maybe the child will now scream. And when now we, I meet that person, he would just run away without even taking his life. And now the owner of the house will say, now I'm signing. No any other person will enter here. Because as the wickedness increases, that's how now love will grow cold. And then, and then a person will befriend a servant at your home. He will befriend your wife. And yet he's on a mission of now bewitching your, your, of bewitching your children. <laughs> Don't you hear such stories? That people now are having different mm -hmm. kinds of conflicts. Mm -hmm. That the maid has now killed the child in a certain way. All those things. Mm -hmm. All this wickedness. Mm -hmm. These are the reason to why love is now becoming cold. Mm -hmm. And people will say this person should not reach here. And even the child whom you raised should not even come here. Uh, so don't we now send the motorcycles to bring our food? Don't you know now motorcycles which bring things which are, there's a company called Vubava which sends out food to people? And it also sends out food which is cooked. So as it reaches here and now we're moving it from it and there comes a person here we now give them a photo book and they start looking at pictures. Because it has come as a food with, according to the rest of people in the house. But back in the time, every person would come, they would eat. So there was a saying saying that when one finds others eating, he eats with them. So if any person would come, he would serve them. So now the pot would always be filled with food. All the old parents here It was not allowed for people now to take all the food. Uh, all the food for the so in a disciplined manner, it was like any guest would come and find something to serve. Them. And there would always be milk there. In a way that... There would be like an, a certain uh, jar for people whom they're going to drink from it. <inaudible> that there's no person who's going to come and we do not find a way to give them something to drink. <inaudible> so that's how we grew up in our background. <inaudible> so that's how we lived. <inaudible> but now days have become troublesome. So we increase now love will grow As I conclude, because we'll continue together. I want to talk about Psalm 45, verse 18. And then Psalm 45, verse 18. Nzibukiriza izina ryawe ibihe byose nicyo gituma amahanga azagushima iteka ryose nzagira nte nzibukiriza I will perpetuate your memory through all generations therefore the nations will praise you forever and ever urumva New generation. Look, every generation. So this is like I will now remind all the generations, all the descendants. So it was it wasn't easy to find another one. 
I will perpetuate your memory through all generations. I will keep on reminding them. Reminding them your name forever. So therefore the nations will praise you forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this word. So even though there wouldn't be a person to praise God for his deeds. So my praise will be a praise through which I will remind people. Every new generation. Every generation. They will know of what God has done. And for therefore, all nations will be having a praise for you ever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reminding people. Reminding people. I told you back in the days that among the things which we can speak of, it is to forget what the Lord has done. It is a weapon that the devil uses to weaken people. But in a time that people are now starting to forget, let me remember you. Let me remember you. They can say when we would say, let me remind you. Remind you. Can we would say? remind you what you forgot so if Sorry. I talk about my things individually it will cause you to, re to remember your things now and nations will always be having praise and I'm concluding in Psalm 52 verse 11 it is like the ninth verse for other Bibles yeah. For what you have done, I will always praise you in the presence of your faithful people, and I will hope in your name, for your name is good. In the presence, in the presence of your faithful people, the, yeah, and I will hope in your name, Amen. for your name is good. I will speak of your praises. In the presence of your people, this word of hoping or waiting, so this word of hoping before your faithful ones, so as I was preparing this sermon, praying to God, I was given an explanation to this. So when you're thinking about the past, so God will always give you something for which you will always hope for. Have you heard this? When you thank God for what he has done in the past, it helps you to wait for the next. And God will always do in a way that you always hope for the next. That's why, that's why you will always see that the saints will always have promises. He fulfills he fulfills one among them and he promises you another one. But what is the waiting place? So you youth, the young ladies and gentlemen, you women and men, where is the waiting place of a righteous what the Lord has said? I will hope for the rest before your faithful people in the presence of the people. I will hope for your things where the saints wait for. Let me tell you, friend of Christ, be like a person hoping something from God. So there are things that a lady who has been dated and they have already announced their marriage, there are people whom she won't visit, 
Their games she will no longer play. There are weddings which she will not attend. There's a skirt she does not wear. Then there are drinks which she does not drink. Because they can kill her. Because it can kill the wedding. And the same applies to the person, the young man has been saved. And he has been favored and then they have accepted him. Especially that you know now that sometimes you pretend whether you were born and that same day is the day when you are on your shirt. So at the time you would wear different kinds of trousers, but that specific day you would wear a neat trousers. So from that place, they have accepted you. So there's a place where now you are called the son-in-law. So now there are peer pressures which you will no longer go in. The places where now you used to eat different kinds of food, you will no longer go there. Because you have become a different kind of person in the society and the community. So there is a waiting place. I will hope in the presence of your faithful ones. Because when you are in the presence of your faithful ones, your fiance will not find you there under the tree playing different kinds of games, cards, and you are not even winning. He can even ask him herself or himself. So am I going to get married to this person? Is he the person to just spend the entire day here playing under the tree? There's no activity, there's no wage, there's no development, there's nothing. They get to see that they are lighting up the cigarette for you. And then when they see that they are now smoking right next to you, you are not even saying in the name of Jesus, you are seated there. So I'm telling you that truly the wedding will be. That's why the word has told us that I will wait for what the Lord has said in the presence of his faithful ones. So David has said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in bread pasture. And he makes me lie down in the running streams. Even though I might move in the shadow of death, I will not fear any evil. So his staff is the one which carries me. And he's the one which comforts me. He prepares my table in the sight of my enemies. And he has an Anointed me, and my cup has overflowed. Myself now, me myself. So me as it is. So me as it's in that way. I will dwell in the house of God all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will dwell in the house of God for the rest of my life. So that is the waiting place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's the place where I will have my hope from. So sisters, brethren, so let me tell you my daughters and sons. So there's a time where you will wait from and you won't even get anything. So will you even milk an ox? But there's a place where you will wait from and things will work out well. Know, the, you know your waiting place. So and then God, he's creating his praises for you. He's God who creates thanksgiving. He has already sold it. Maybe you have already nurtured them. So now wait, be patient that they can grow. And that garden is none other than the new. 
So God is going to now harvest the praises in you because you are sold in a challenge. Today, once you have a challenge and you face battles and you face different battles, he was now creating a soul in praises. Be patient that he can harvest his praise. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Stand on your feet and